I'd like to talk about inner union. When we are diagnosed with a serious illness, we tend to separate it. We tend to look at, well, there's me and there's my illness. And the challenge with that is, is that we no longer can actually heal that illness if we're separate from it. But the truth is the illness is just part of us. And it is true that sometimes, you know, illness isn't caused by our emotions or our issues in life. Sometimes we literally do inhale toxic chemicals and we now have tumors or we have a disease. This is all true. But when we separate ourselves from the parts of us that are damaged, that are hurting, that are showing the wear from whatever it is that life has thrown us, we're no longer able to help. You know, it's kind of like seeing someone over there that's drowning and you're like, yeah, well, I'm all, all the way over here, so... I can't really help, even though I have nothing to do with the drowning. What if we went over and actually joined with them and pulled them out? This is like our bodies. If our bodies are sick, it doesn't matter what we're sick with. We need to join with it and actually go, all right, you know what? We're all in this together. Whether we have diabetes or cancer or even depression or whatever it is you're struggling with, we have to bring everything back together. So the first thing we have to look at is, why are we separating ourself from ourself? In a lot of illness that's chronic, like cancer, not all cancers, there's a lot of things that are called cancer today. But if you have an illness that's chronic, that's continuing on, we have to look at what else is going on inside of our bodies our emotional, mental, spiritual, physical bodies, the whole thing. And what are we separating ourselves from? For example, we may separate ourselves from sadness. We don't want to feel this way. We don't want to be grieving anymore. We don't want to be depressed. We don't want to feel lonely. We don't want to feel these feelings. So in order to survive, we separate ourselves from those things, almost like walling them off, like in a tumor, let's say and we put them away and we don't look at them. But we have now gotten rid of any chance of healing it because we've put it away. How are we ever gonna fix our depression if we simply take a drug, recreational or prescribed? If we just take something, we are never gonna heal what's causing that depression. We're never gonna get through the grief. We're never going to make changes in our lives to actually change our state of being. So slowly, we have to actually develop a meditative mind. When people meditate, you know, it's, it's quite a challenge if you're not used to it, which is like everyone. We need, to, we need to develop this place inside of us that's just loving, non-judgmental, and still. So when you meditate, you know, and there's lots of places online to learn how to meditate. It's all about finding this inner still place. When we have that inner still place, then if we're sad, or we're grieving, or we're hurt, or we are honestly just depressed beyond measure and we just don't know how to change anything, then we can go into that still place and almost observe ourselves objectively and go, like, are you okay? What's going on? Wow, we're still grieving this. What's going on? You know, what's, what are we not doing? How do we fix this? Or maybe we live in a situation that we really don't like, and deep down we hate our life. The question becomes from that still place, well, what can we change? Why can't we change it? What are we afraid of? And when we can actually connect with those parts of us that we don't want to look at, then we can start to heal, because then we will start to make changes. We will start to make different choices that are actually in our own best interest, which means our own health, our wholeness, who we really are, why we were put here on this planet. We weren't put here on this planet to, I don't know, be everyone else's something. We actually are each individual people with a journey to take. And sometimes we get pulled off based on culture, our family, expectations, needing to make money, whatever it is, we get pulled off and we lose ourselves. 
And the key to healing is always bringing all the parts that we've hidden away back together. That's what healing means. Healing all the parts that we've sent away. And when we can start to do that from this really quiet meditative center, then we can actually start to heal. Like our bodies are magical. It heals all the time. You know, from the simplest thing of just cutting your finger, we expect it to heal unless something's wrong. We put a band-aid on it, we keep it clean, and the body just magically knits it all up. My body's been cut and bruised and hurt so many times in my 50 years, and yet, short of a couple, star a couple deep scars from surgery, you would never know. There's no sign of anything. That's what our bodies are made for. The key is we have to actually mobilize that healing system, which means we have to bring everything to the table, right? If we're going to be healed, we can't say, well, here's what I want to think about and we'll heal that, because that's not what needs to be healed. It's all the things I don't want to think about. And we have to have the courage, which comes from whatever it is that brings you courage, prayer, meditation, friends, whatever it takes to say, I'm going to bring all of this and place it on the table and we're going to heal. And this is the real key to really know, you know what? The disease isn't over there. I embrace it and we're going to heal it together. And this is really, really important. So the question becomes, when we truly want to heal, what is it we don't want to look at? What do we not want to put on the table? What are the things that we wouldn't want anyone else to know? These are the things we need to bring into our, you know, our prayers, our meditation, to sit quietly and ask the question, how do I heal this? How do I integrate this into my life without going crazy? <laughs> because out the other side, there's real happiness. And it's hard to imagine sometimes when we're down. But we are, we're all capable of real, genuine happiness.